Thank you for joining us on this video. My name is Elizabeth. I'm here with my friends Michael and Freddie and Rhonda. And we're talking about the Heart to Honduras Distinctive. What makes this ministry unique? And um, as, as we're preparing to talk about this next section on a director of missions for Honduras, I'm reminded of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. And in there, God talks about the role of the pastor, mm -hmm. teachers, others, is to be an equipper of God's people for works of ministry. And that's been a passion of mine for many years, is helping awaken the giftings and the calling of people within the body. And so this is one way that churches can raise up someone who is gifted and called uniquely to champion, to spearhead, to, um, to be the advocate for a church's ministry in Honduras. And so I'm here at the Exeter Church of God, and Rhonda is the, uh, the director of Missions for Honduras here. So Rhonda, I would love to hear a little bit of your testimony, some of your story about not only how you came into this role, but what does this role do? What does that look like practically here? Perfect. I took my first trip to Honduras in 2009, and as a participant, not as a leader, um, over the next couple of years, I am, it evolved into me being the leader and then transformed with Heart to Honduras when we got into the, um, the partnership roles and, and joining, partnering with churches. There was a strong push, pull, tug mm -hmm. at my heart that we needed to establish a really strong relationship in the village with the community that we were working in, working with. And um, so I pulled a lot of people into that, and I, including Pastor Michael, yeah. <laughs> because without the, of course, without the support of the pastor and the leadership in the church, it's very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. I had and have no specific title in the church except for a, a passionate Honduran American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pastor Freddie one time told me, that I'm more popular in Honduras than Coke. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, yeah. <laughs> and so, but that's the extent of our relationship. We have grown that close that we joke as, and we, we um, yeah. as family. And yeah. so, it's true. True, yeah. And so, um, so what that looks like is bringing people from your home community, your church, your family, um, to visit your community, your home, and your family in Honduras. Mm. Um, building those strong relationships is paramount. Um, it doesn't matter how much money you send, how many things you build, um, that you don't get to know people that way. Mm -hmm. And so um, traveling, spending time, drinking coffee or Coke, Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> sitting on sitting on the porch, and having conversation. It's not always easy because there is a language barrier for some people. A lot of people do speak Spanish. Some people speak English in Honduras, um, and that was a huge fear I had, and a, a huge mm. personal barrier that I thought I had when I first started going. Mm. And I just had to pray into that. I had to say, Lord. Take away this fear and give me language. Um, I'm still far from fluent. I do a lot better. And then um, with the Holy Spirit as an interpreter, a lot of times the word gets across. So don't let that be a fear. Don't let that be a stumbling block. Um, what it looks like as a champion for Honduras and your church um, depends on your church. There literally are pastor, mission pastors, and that's awesome. Um, we're a small church, and we don't have that. But there needs to be a person who is passionate about that initiative, about that pro person, about that um, country, about heart, you know, fostering that relationship with Heart to Honduras and with your partner in Honduras. Mm -hmm. Let me just jump in on that, too. And so... I know that it was a desire and an intention of mine for us to be deeply involved in Honduras and with Pastor Freddie. Um, but it was difficult because of almost the feeling of being spread too thin. And so Rhonda has been an incredible blessing to us to be able to, like you'd said, champion a cause. And now... Um, you know, really, we're riding on the coattails that Rhonda brings to the table. And then our church is reaping the benefits of somebody 
who continues to drive in that one direction and is our go-between. She is the communicator. She is the one that's in close relationship. And that doesn't mean relieve me of responsibility of relationship, but it empowers me for greater relationship. And so, I mean, it's just been a huge blessing. So many people have gone to Honduras because there's been a champion. Uh, so much more impact and resource has gone or have been accomplished in Honduras because we have a champion that way. And so I can't imagine ever experiencing the type of fruit that we've experienced without having somebody who's dedicated and focused in that realm in that way. Mm -hmm. So if I were to give any kind of action item out of this conversation to any of the partners that are listening, uh, you know, uh, Elizabeth referred to Ephesians chapter four, and uh, sometimes there's pressure upon us to do all of the work of ministry. And I think it's a trap from the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, we are meant to do things together. It's the body of Christ. None of us have all of the gifts. We need one another. Right. And so there are people in your congregation that are called by God to do great and powerful things. And our job is to equip them to do that work of ministry. Yes. Most of the time, that looks like that laying down our agendas, laying yes. down our even pride at times mm -hmm. in order to allow people to be able to flourish. Uh, we don't mean to communicate that we've done it perfectly. We've we've learned a lot through mistakes along the way. We've had conversations that have been fostering that development. Um, but find those people. There are people that are passionate about you. They probably come complaining um, is how you're going to see that, com that compassion from the beginning and that passion from the beginning. Um, and so as a leader, how can you take that idea and direct it somewhere? Uh, I think God can use that in some great ways in churches across America. Thank you so much for joining us in these video chats. We really appreciate your interest. If something has captured your imagination with regards to Heart to Honduras, would you please visit us? We would love to engage with you further. You can find us on the web at hth.org. You can like us on Facebook. We are Heart to the number two Honduras, Heart to Honduras on Facebook. and. If you've been moved to even contribute financially today, you can go to our website. In the upper right-hand corner, there is a Donate Now button. Uh, we would just be so grateful to connect with you in whatever way the Lord might lead. Thank you.